Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us here. Uh, I'm Shashank Neelam from Google. Um, I'm part of the Switch Network OS team at Google um, and work with Neha. And Anand is from Broadcom um, in a similar team, I think, at Broadcom. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, streaming telemetry with Sonic UMF. Um, so it's um, uh, maybe I'll go over the overview uh, agenda. So there are roughly four sections. I think I'll talk about the overview. What is GNMI? What is streaming telemetry? And so on. Um, Anand will talk about uh, some of the streaming telemetry features within UMF. I think Neha will talk about uh, real-world applications that uh, we've used with this streaming telemetry. And the last is call to action. So all right, so what is GNMI? I think GNMI is a um, network management interface. That's what it stands for. It's a specification of RPCs and behaviors uh, for managing the state of a switch. And um, uh, it supports both mutating the state of the switch through a config push as well as uh, retrieving telemetry from the switch. Um, it's built on the gRPC, uh, open source gRPC framework, and is designed to carry any kind of uh, data that's structured as a tree form, uh, Yang being one example. Uh, within UMF, I think um, there are two uh, sort of kinds of Yang structures. One is uh, called Sonic Native Yang, as well as uh, Open Config, uh, which, uh, and uh, UMF supports both. So why use GNMI? Um, so GNMI is a, a single interface for both uh, telemetry and configuration. Um, it's based on, um, or its streaming is based on a specified frequency or upon state change, which can be uh, selected by the, the controller or the client in this case. Um, it supports a push model, that is subscriptions, in instead of a pull model. Um, Uh, it it can deliver any telemetry from any of the sources within the switch, like for example, directly from line cards, as long as there is a Yang model to, to support it, and the source uh, there's a source for it. GNMI can retrieve the telemetry. Um, it uses a very structured uh, data format uh, based on Yang models, as well as very efficient serialization, which is based on um, protocol buffers or or a notification buffers. Uh, it's built on uh, the standard RPC, f uh, standard RPC framework, uh, which has many language bindings. So the advantages of uh, GNMI streaming is obviously one is push model versus the pull model, which allows us to uh, have very low latency when there is a, an event in the system, whether it is a link event or an alarm. Um, you have the ability to suppress redundant data uh, at the source itself within the switch. So this allows us to scale uh, to many diff uh, large number of switches, since it's, it's the switches that uh, decide which data to send out uh, to the client. Um, it can support, like I said, it can support many kinds of telemetry, but uh, the three things that uh, we want to focus on in the next few slides uh, is system metrics, uh, network statistics, and events. And I think with that, I'll hand over the mic to Anand. Thank you, Shashank. So, uh, we have a requirement to uh, stream multiple types of data here, uh, like uh, data uh, in the form of um, state information, operational information, counter information out of any switch to the controller. So in order to stream different types of data, one streaming method is not helpful. We need multiple ways to stream the data out. So in order to have that uh, capability, we have provided multiple ways to stream out the data from the GNMI server. So we have one subscription wherein if you want to just get the data once from the switch, then we can use the one subscription. And there is something called sample subscription, which is interval-based streaming wherein the server on a periodic basis streams the data out from the switch. So this can be collected in the uh, controller and can be uh, showed for, for different metrics. And here, we have a feature called suppress redundant, which was very difficult to implement for us uh, because the server uh, calculates the diff between those intervals. Only if there is change, it sends it to the controller so that the controller every time doesn't have to do a diff. 
So this feature was very helpful for the controller side so that the operation on the controller side is minimal and the operation is taking place on the switch itself. So since controller has to operate on multiple switches, this, this uh, feature was very helpful. And apart from this, we uh, wanted to stream out any state change information. So with that, uh, on change was very helpful wherein it streams only when there is a change in the data. We'll explain that in the next uh, slide. So we have the sample in the on-chain uh, on subscription here. So in case of the sample subscription, any path that is requested, initially the values will be sent back immediately and we'll mark it as in sync with the controller now. So once it is marked as in sync, every 60 seconds we can uh, send the data back. But if the suppressed redundant is set to true, then only if there is a change in that initial value, the data will be sent uh, after 60 seconds. Otherwise, nothing will be sent even after 60 seconds. So that way, the controller will get only when the data changes, even in case of sample subscription. On the other side, uh, if you see on change, uh, when a particular path is requested, the initial values is sent and marked as in sync. Nothing will be sent until any change in the values on the database happens. Only then the notification is sent back to the controller. So this is very helpful in any uh, state, state change and uh, any alerts that come uh, to the controller. That way it is very helpful only when uh, things change. Sample subscription is also helpful in case of counter information because on change information can on change subscription cannot be uh, done on a counter uh, data because the counter data is very frequent and uh, the notification goes to the controller in that frequency it cannot handle it. So sample is used in case of counters as well. So subscription, we have a wildcard as well supported on the subscription wherein if you see the path, we can use the wildcard on the key there uh, on the interface name. You see a name equal to star there so that all interface is being queried here. The state information of all the interfaces are being subscribed in this case. So th there can be multiple keys also supported wherein in case of interface uh, and the sub-interface, uh, the, the index is marked as wild key here. And uh, we can also mix and match wherein uh, partial wildcard uh, we can do and uh, an actual value can also be sent wherein the interface name is a wildcard and the index is an actual value. The reverse can also be done with the wildcard subscription. And there is also a minimum sample interval. Uh, we have a global minimum on the sample interval and uh, we can also have a per path minimum that can be specified in the server. So that way, uh, depending on the data, the frequency of uh, a sample subscription can be determined in the server itself. So on-chain support uh, are implemented using uh, subscriptions that relies on the key space notification of the Redis DB. So any key space notification that comes to the uh, JNMI server, that will convert it into the open config YANG format and it uh, notifies back to the controller. So, uh, there is one more format called the target defined subscription, wherein this is a, a, a combination of uh, both uh, sample subscription and the uh, on-chain sub subscription, but it is determined by the switch itself, depending on the data being queried. So for example, if uh, data on the counters is being queried, it will default to the sample subscription. If it is a state uh, change, notification, then automatically it will be defaulted uh, to the on-change notification. So the switch decides whether it is a target defines, uh, I mean it's a sample subscription or an on-change subscription. Next slide, please. So with this, we have two different uh, types of schema that is supported in the GNMI server. We have the Sonic native schema wherein uh, the Redis DB format, we can stream the data out, which was already there. Uh, now with this uh, support that we have added, open config uh, in data also can be streamed out. So uh, there can be a combination of these two that is also supported in the server. So one, some clients can ask for Sonic native schema, some clients can ask only open config and the same GNMI server will, can uh, respond to both of the requests. So schema uh, type decision is completely uh, with the client, I mean the controller. So uh, that, uh, both, both those uh, schemas are being supported uh, from the GNMI server. 
So with this, I would like to uh, hand over the uh, mic to Neha. She'll take over the real world applications using this uh, streaming telemetry information that we have given support and how, they, how it has been uh, uh, done uh, in their controller. Hello. So in this next section, we'll talk about now that we've seen that we are able to get the data. So what we do with this data and how we utilize it. Um, yeah, so the first uh, point to what I think uh, Shashank talked about what we use, or at least one of the critical things that we use to see or measure is the CPU utilization. I think uh, between that metric, uh, uh, how we get this data is we got an aggregate data from the switches from our production fleet and we were able to get um, uh, um, or plot this uh, graph here that actually charts the CPU load average per container for, uh, per switch and then aggregate that across. In this case, it's a 10 minute period, but we're able to get information on that then we were able to utilize for um, the system analysis for different, um, different uh, telemetry that we can then leverage to plot a uh, plot a graph for what we can do with this data. So in this case, uh, the way we used it was debugging for forensic data. We use it for performance uh, analysis like regressions or if there have been improvements, uh, detection across, uh, across multiple uh, releases or versions. Uh, also profiling per container um, load of uh, devices. So in this particular graph we see here, uh, the x-axis has uh, the time for a 10 minute period and this is information we're actually collecting over the open config path that's in red over here. Um, that's the CPU state total average and this does plot, since we collect this uh, through a sample subscription every 30 seconds, this does collect it per minute which means like over two, uh, two subscriptions, aggregates that information and then plots it out per CPU scheduler. And um, this again gives us uh, this interesting graph here where we can see the metrics getting collected for some, or at least like more than half of the schedulers getting up to a point and then for the rest of the half. And then we can map that out to what process we're then use, uh, utilizing different CPU schedulers and then use that information to input to our monitoring pipelines. And then another, another uh, system metric that we do uh, calculate or do uh, uh, used to profile is also the memory usage, similar to the CPU utilization. In this case, we also use an open config path, the memory usage under system model system processes, and that does chart it across different containers. So every time we have, say, intensive operations like config push, or we are getting the state of the switch, we are able to see this um, memory usage spike over that time period, and then also able to correlate that information with what we are seeing instantaneously on the switch. Um, here in this uh, graph, we have memory usage per container in bytes on the x-axis with again a time period of four hours. And this is also something we are collecting instantaneously, a sample subscription every 30 seconds uh, over a four hour window. And with that, we're able to see how or what the memory usage looks like across different switches in a real time window as well as also collected for historical analysis later on. Um, this too, again, we use, uh, how we use it is to identify regressions. We can uh, perform analysis of historical usage or releases. We can look at it. It gives us an insight into any real system load at the point for also, you, which will be useful for planning future deployments across, uh, across versions. And then a different part, a uh, different uh, metric that we also use is for network monitoring. We use it for both interface and queue statistics. Uh, this graph plots uh, the bytes per second across the time period of one hour, also using a sample subscription every 30 seconds. Again, these counters are all the in packets, the out packets across the open config interfaces model that we have seen. Um, and this does also something that we use to track network SLO violations. We also use it to plug into our monitoring pipelines and also to see how we can distribute that interface, uh, network interface load across switches, across devices. And um, also something that informs us of the trend, the history and the trend of traffic across um, the fleet uh, of switches in production. The next part is 
Similarly, monitoring the Q statistics. This uh, here we have used the cost model under um, uh, cost model actually interfaces under cost and per interface per Q counters. Uh, uh, this is the transmit packets, and we are pl uh, plotting this against two Qs, F1, B1. Um, again, to see uh, the historical data, how a, uh, congested a queue, and as well, that also informs us how congested the traffic can be. And this also uh, provides that feedback loop for us to go into and see perform high level traffic engineering and then to redistribute the loads and then also um, informs uh, uh, different uh, trends that we see, what uh, and then how we can load balance and like uh, use that in our monitoring pipelines to improve our networks. This again, another sample subscription that we perform every 30 seconds and over a 13 pe uh, minute period, which also showcases how interestingly the traffic um, does change in such a frequent uh, period of time. Yeah, so, so far we've talked about sample subscription, and this is one example for an on-chain subscription. Uh, we both uh, use, I mean, you, we use on-chain subscription for both different types of events in the system as well as alarms. In this case, we have a switch um, that has um, different front pan ports that reports to the state database and also has the GNMI server on the switch. We also, uh, there's a controller that uh, has the switch in its domain, which we see the status of this um, uh, switch right now and the ports in that switch is up. But once, say, if um, one of the ports goes down or maybe the switch goes down, that uh, generates an instantaneous alarm to this through the state database directly to the controller and it gener um, results in an on-change update. And almost instantaneously we see that going, the port going down. Um, when that controller gets that information, it's able to act almost immediately on that. And that's when it's able to reprogram the fabric. Uh, if the switch uh, goes down, immediately we're able to distribute the drain that switch, distribute that load across the network and uh, resolving routes and the traffic across across the fleet in that point. So somewhat similar to a self-healing network that like, facilitates that kind of uh, uh, network uh, role system. And then I think that uh, with that I hand it back to Shashank. Um, thank you, um, Anand and Neha. Um, I think uh, this would not be possible if not for the many collaborators across the UMF um, um, and I would like to invite you all, uh, I think, to get engaged with the UMF working group. We meet about once a month. Um, you can see this is the mailing list and the web page that we have. Um, the calendar events, I think you can find them on, the, on this web page. Um, thank you. Oh, uh, sorry. I'd like to call out a special uh, call out to Dell, I think, uh, who's, who've been major contributors to UMF. Thank you. Thank you.